This week we're creating 3D lettering with extrusion details in long shadows. In today's tutorial, we'll be creating beginner-friendly 3D lettering complete with inline details, long shadows, and a hairline highlight. We'll only be using two brushes for this entire piece, and both are from my Font Lovers brush set. We'll use the Bumpy Ink Brush for the entire piece except for the extrusion details, which we'll use the Smooth Pencil for. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen, and let's begin. Okay, we've got our brand new canvas, and the first thing we're going to do is set our background color. So come into your layers, tap on background color, and choose the very first color. The next thing we're going to do is create our base lettering. So come to your layers, and let's label the first layer lettering. And we're going to grab this lightest kind of teal color. It's the second one. And we're going to grab our bumpy ink brush and up the size pretty high. I'm coming up to about 25%. And we need a drawing guide. I like making sure that all of my lettering is centered. So in order to do that, I'm going to tap on the wrench, go to canvas and toggle on drawing guide. Right now the drawing guide is really dark. So in order to see it better, let's hit edit drawing guide. And up here you can see this color bar. If we tap where the white is, it'll change it to white. And we don't need all of these grid lines. We really just need a vertical and horizontal hairline. So drag your grid size all the way up to max. I'm going to increase the thickness and the opacity so you can see it better on screen and then hit done. All right, so now I'm going to write out the first word and I'm going to make sure that it's centered and I like putting all of my words on their own layer just to make sure everything's centered as I work and that way I know when they're all together it's also going to be really nice and centered. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and write out the next word and now select it and you want to make sure down here uniform and snapping is turned on. So if you need to rescale anything, like I want to make this just a tiny bit smaller, that it'll rescale proportionally. I'm going to fix this S. I don't like how that looks. Okay, create a brand new layer. And one more layer. Okay, let's zoom out and make sure everything feels pretty good. We turn off our crosshairs now. So I'm going to merge all these together just by pinching them. And I'm going to reduce the size just a little bit and then recenter it on my canvas. And we're ready to go. So I'm going to add in an inline detail, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm going to put a line in the middle of all of these letters. This is totally optional. I like the way that it looks, so I'm going to add it in. And in order to do that, I'm going to come to my layers. Above my lettering layer, I'm going to create a brand new layer. Label this one inline. I'm going to select the same color as our background color. I'm still using that bumpy ink brush, but I'm going to reduce it way down to like 2%. And I'm just going to be really, really careful and draw that line right in the middle of all of these letters. Okay, once you have your inline detail done, now we're going to add in that extrusion layer to make it look 3D. So in order to do that, we're going to tap on the lettering layers thumbnail, choose select. Down here, make sure that color fill is not selected. Just make sure freehand and add are selected. And then come over to your layers, create a brand new layer, drag it underneath the lettering layer. And we're going to change the color of this to this color. So tap on the fourth color and come back to your layers, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. So now we have the same lettering, only it's a different color. And this is what's going to be our extrusion. In order to create the extrusion, we need to utilize the motion blur. Let's first label this layer extrusion to keep everything really organized. So I'm going to hit the magic wand over here, choose motion blur layer, and I'm going to drag it down and towards the bottom right. And I'm not going to go too high up here. You'll be able to see the percentage. So I'm, let's drag it down. I'm not, I think I'm going to stay right around 15%. So I want it to be subtle, but still apparent. So once you have that, you can see it's really soft. So we're going to harden up those edges by just tapping on the layer thumbnail, choose select, come back to the layer, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. And I'm going to do this about five times. Tap on the layer thumbnail, select, Tap on the layer thumbnail, fill layer. So you can see that hardened up those edges, which is what we need in order for this to look believably 3D. So once you have 
your extrusion. Now we just need to move it into place. So select it with your cursor icon and just drag it over and it kind of snaps when it hits that edge. So that is our extrusion and you can see it's already looking 3D. To hit that 3D effect home a little bit more, I'm going to add some shading onto this extrusion layer. This part is totally optional, but it does add that really realistic 3D look to it. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a brand new layer above the extrusion layer. I'm going to label this one detail and we need to apply a clipping mask to this because whatever I paint on top of the extrusion, I want it locked in to the extrusion layer. So tap in the layer thumbnail and apply a clipping mask. I'm also going to use the exact same color as the extrusion layer, but I need it to appear darker. So I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. So tap on the little N, drag this up to multiply, and this will appear pretty dark, but we're going to work that way so we can keep track of everything and it'll be a lot easier. And then we'll reduce the opacity of it afterwards. For this detail, kind of the shadow on top of it, I want it to have a little bit of extra texture to give this more personality. So I'm going to switch over to the smooth pencil brush, which is still part of that Font Lovers brush set. So what I'm going to do is imagine that I have a light source kind of coming up from either the top or from the top right. So anything that is falling underneath or the bottom edges, those are all going to be in shadow. So I'm going to add that shadow to those areas. So like this part of the S isn't going to get any light, so that's going to be in shadow. This underside, this part of the S, and then for the M, this part, this part would be in shadow. So we're just looking at the areas of extreme shadow for these different letters. Okay, we've got all those shadows in there and you can see how it's popping a lot more now, but it's really, really heavy. So let's reduce that opacity. So tap on the little M and drag it down. I'm gonna come down to about, I'll go down to 45. The next thing we need to do is add an additional shadow because we already have 3D letters now, but these 3D letters need to cast a shadow. So they're not just floating, it'll ground them to the background so it looks like they're actually lifting up off of your screen. So in order to create that extrusion shadow, we're going to do it very similarly to how we created the extrusion itself. So come to the extrusion layer, tap on the layer thumbnail, and choose select come back to your layers up at the very top. If you add a new layer right underneath here, it's going to take on a clipping mask, which we don't wanna do. So come to the top, create a brand new layer. This layer is going to be this darkest color. It's the third one. Come back to your layers, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. So now you can see we've got the extrusion layer, only it's a different color. And the extrusion shadow needs to be behind the, the extrusion layer. So tap on that layer and drag it underneath the extrusion layer. And we'll label this one extrusion shadow. So we're going to do a similar process again with using the motion blur, only this time we're going to go from the right to the left, the bottom left corner. So I'm going to grab my magic wand, choose motion blur layer, and this time I'm going to make it a little bit larger because we've got 3D letters, they're casting a shadow that's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to drag this over and I'm going to drag it to, let's see, our extrusion was 15%, so I'm going to go to 25, right around 25% for the motion blur. And now you can see it's really soft but it's there, so we need to harden it up a little bit, but not to the extent that we did with the extrusion layer. Since this is a shadow, it's going to have softer edges just naturally. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail, choose select, and then fill layer like we did before, but I'm only going to do this twice instead of five times. Fill layer, and now we can see it a little bit better, and we can just let it snap into place. And there we go, and now it looks nice and believable like it's on the background. And then the last little detail that I like adding in is just a really subtle hairline highlight where the light source is coming from. So I mentioned the light source would be coming possibly from the top right right here. And since we're casting the shadow in this direction, it's definitely coming from here. So I wanna add just a hairline highlight to these letters, just to add that extra bit of contrast to make it lift off of the screen. So in order to do that, we're going to come to our lettering layer, tap on the layer thumbnail, choose select, create a brand new layer. This time we're going to fill it with white, so it's super contrasty. So tap where the white is, double tap, and you'll get true white. 
and then tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. So now our lettering is white, but we need this to be behind our regular lettering layer, this highlight. So drag it underneath the lettering layer and you can see automatically it takes on a clipping mask. That's what the little arrow is. So you can have stackable clipping masks and you just look at where the arrows point down to the last layer that does not have a little arrow. So that's what they're all being masked into. So it's a really helpful method of working non-destructively with stackable clipping masks. So what I'm going to do is this layer, since it's masked into the extrusion layer, which is exactly what I want it to do, I'm just going to tap it over like two or three times to the right. So tap, tap, and you can just see if the quantity is enough for you. I think I want to go one more just to make it that much more obvious. We can zoom in here and you can see that beautiful little highlight right against some of these shadow areas that make it really pop. That's an introduction to 3D lettering in Procreate. If you would like to learn more or create more projects just like this, I have an entire course called 3D Lettering in Procreate. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. Once again, everything mentioned in this tutorial, they're all right in the video description as well, including the Font Lovers brush set and that free color palette. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Thank you.